go, I'd be ready to go high. So 16, 83, 16, 16. Are we all, are we hot? Can we spot the numbers of the um Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to another Saturday and you know what that means it's football football here at the Apprentice School Athletic Field on the campus of Newport News Shipbuilding We'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm Howard McCain, and I will, bring in, I will be bringing you the play-by-play -play action as it happens here live here at the athletic field of the Apprentice School. Folks, it is senior day here, and we are celebrating our seniors, our graduating seniors uh, today. We are going to actually have the to coin toss here shortly, and our honorary captain for today will be the senior class for the Apprentice School. So we are getting set here for a for a kickoff. Well, actually, the coin toss first and then kick here very, very soon. So, again, thank you so much for joining us. It is a pleasure to have you along with us. The last time we were together, we saw the apprentice school builders put a shellacking on Central International College by a score of 80 to nothing. Uh, things kind of got out of hand quickly in that football game, so much so that both of the head coaches agreed on a running clock in the second half. So even with that, the Bills were able to post a shutout in that game and again, able to put up 80 points against the visitors. But folks, that will not be the case today as they take on the Lewisburg Hurricanes out of Lewisburg, North Carolina. This is a legit team, ladies and gentlemen, and they are coming into this afternoon's game loose and ready to go. The Captains are making their way to midfield as I try to get all of their numbers for you. So for the visiting Hurricanes, Gavin Gun Gundiker, Malachi Greer, Jacob Galazuno, I believe Ty Lawrence, and Chavez Samuels. I believe we had one that stayed back. That was Gavin. So for the Builders, again, this is senior day. So at midfield, at midfield is Paul Massey Jr., Nick Pierce, along with Javion Walker, and he is also joined by his brother, Christian Walker. Our referee has already committed the coin toss. I believe Lewisburg won the toss. We'll get the indication here. From today. Lewisburg has won the coin toss. They have elected to defer. Newport News Apprentice will receive away from the clock and the voice you just heard was the voice of our referee today Kevin Salmanine he's also joined on the field by umpire Robert Hemingway the head linesman today will be Bill Carson the line judge will be Chad Johnson he'll be joined by the field judge Will Adams our side judge today will be Dakota Tomlin the back judge will be Mark Collins our play clock operator is Claude Hines and the game clock operator today will be Alva Rose. So we will be kicking off shortly, ladies and gentlemen. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Again, Howard McCain, I will be bringing you the play-by-play -play for this afternoon's action. And I believe that's exactly what we are going to have is action. Why these teams are coming in right now and both teams are hot. The Hurricanes come in to this afternoon's contest with a overall record of five and two head by, led by their head coach, Quindera Spielman. Coach Spielman is actually in his first year at the helm of the program, so his team's 5-2 record is his overall career record with the Hurricanes. They'll be going up against Coach Vincent Brown, as you can hear and see the apprentice school builders making their way onto the field. Again, led by head coach Vincent Brown, who's in his second year as the head man for the builders. He comes in with a overall record of 7-8, and eight, but this year's edition of the builders has a record of of five and one 
again, put last week completely out of your mind if you joined us last week when this team took on Central International. Why? This is going to be a totally different ball game. This game is going to be a very competitive game against two teams that are coming in with a lot of confidence. We watched Lewisburg in the warm-ups earlier, and I got to I got to admit, these guys came into the to, to to today's game loose as they could possibly be. During the entire warm-up session, folks, they were dancing, high-fiving, chest bumping, having a good time. Same thing for the Builders. They come into this afternoon's game loose as well. So this should be an exciting contest. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. So we are getting set for the kickoff here shortly as Gavin Gundiger gets ready to kick off to the Builders. Gavin Gundiger, their, so their sophomore kicker. This is a team that is very, very sound in the kicking game. So should it come down to it, Lewisburg will be confident if they have to run their kicker out today. Gundiker approaches the ball, and we are underway. Builders receive it deep in their own territory. Builders around left end, up around the 15. Stumbling out to the 20 yard line is Logan Mize, again, the senior wide receiver, 5'10, 185 pounds. And that is where the Builders will begin their opening campaign on offense here in the first quarter. This is going to be a game that's going to be decided in the trenches today, folks, for the Builders. Lewisburg comes in across their defensive front pretty pretty big again these are guys and we talked about this here in the booth early these are guys that still have d1 aspirations of playing football so they come to lewisburg which is more of like a junior college to kind of get their grades up and also be noticed by a top tier program as the first handoff for the builders goes for a loss on the play lawrence reed is taken down in the backfield it's going to be about a two to three yard loss on first down. So it's going to bring up second and long. It's going to be second and 12, possibly 13 upcoming here for Mason Tatum and the offense. As the builders go with an empty set. Three to Mason's left, four to Mason's right, three to his left, one to two his left, as that's Lundy. I'm sorry, that's Lindy. With the catch out in the flat, I'm sorry, Gertie, Gertie, I'm sorry, I looked, the, uh, I looked at my uh, chart wrong here. So that's Leland Gertie, Leland Gertie able to pick up enough for a first down. That's a big first down here on senior day for the Builders. That's going to continue their drive. First and 10 ball on the Builder 34-yard line, 13.50 remaining in the first quarter. It's Mason Tatum, single setback to his right. Tatum keeps, finds a crease, able to serve, able to surge up field for about a 13 yard gain on the design quarterback run that pushes the builders out to their own 47 yard line. Good looking drive so far being put together by the builders. Builders out, come out in their 11 personnel. One tight end, one setback. As Reed goes in motion. Reed with the catch. Reed, nice blocks downfield. Reed in the open. Only needed one tackle to beat, wasn't able to do so, but he's taken down. Tripped up in hurricane territory by Devin Martin, but there's a flag that may be holding or a block in the back on the builders. I'm not sure, but we'll get that cleared up here in just a moment. Holding offense, number 26, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. Which is strange because 26 was the ball carrier. Correction on the number, 14. All right, there we go. 
that was going to be the first time in football history where the gentleman that was carrying the ball actually committed a holding penalty. But that was cleared up. So that'll move the builders back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. They'll still be in plus territory. They're now at the 48-yard line of the Hurricanes. Clock ticking. 12 minutes, 45 seconds left in the first quarter as Mason Tatum comes to the line. Joined in the backfield by Curtis Green to his right. Three wides to his left, one to his right. Tatum, pressure, flushed, flagged down. Pass was intended for his wide receiver, Ricardo Corpus, but I believe we are going to get a hold in the offensive backfield. So the builder's line of scrimmage was the 48. Offense, number 69, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. So the last couple of plays for the builders have been disastrous. It's actually resulted in 20 yards worth of penalties. So the builders come out of plus territory, back into minus territory. Now the ball sits on the 42-yard line of the builders. We get a whistle, a stoppage. And we are back in play again. Still first down for the Builders, first and about 15. They need to get to the 38-yard line. I'm sorry, the 43-yard line. Other Hurricanes to pick up first as Gertie goes in motion. Tatum. Had his receiver, tried to get it between two defenders. Ball was knocked down, nearly intercepted by the middle linebacker, Jacob Galuzzo. Jacob Galuzzo with the six foot, 210 pound sophomore. Middle linebacker nearly came up with a pick. Wasn't able to do so, so that'll bring up second down 15 for Mason Tatum and the offense. 12-10 remaining in the first period. Builder in motion is Gertie. Tatum, screen to Gertie. Gertie able to break one tackle. Wasn't able to get away from the second. He's finally brought down by Mordecai in Gondu. So a short, short gain on the play of about one. So that's going to bring up third down and 14 for the Builders. Build, uh, Hurricanes with a single high safety. Tatum finds his receiver in the middle of the field. Beautiful catch. And that's going to be enough for the first down as the Builders on third and 14, able to pick it up. So for TK Petty, he's able to pick up the first down, folks, and that's going to put the builders back in business. First and 10 at the Hurricane 30-yard line. Nice job by Tatum and the wide receiver to find a soft spot right there in the middle of the zone is this play did not work out for the builders. Something weird happened up front. So that's going to be a loss of one on first down builders. Go with the up-tempo offense back in the line of scrimmage. 10.43 left in the first. No score so far. Tatum. Three wide receivers to his left, two to his right. It's Tatum able to get out of out of trouble. Was that picked off? I believe that was a pick. Pass picked off in the middle of the field by the defensive back, Devin Martin. So that's going to be the first turnover of this afternoon's game for the Builders. So that pick will give the Hurricanes first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. 10-23 remaining. 
first turnover of the afternoon. Builders with a promising opening drive snuffed out by the defensive back, Devin Martin. Hurricanes on the attack. Give is up the middle. Not a lot, of, not a lot going on in the middle of the defense for the Builders. So that play actually got the Hurricanes back to their the uh, line of scrimmage. Melton on the carry, he goes off. Quarterback for this afternoon is. Reed Shapara. I'm sorry, Shapaya. Shapaya finds his big tight end, number two. Here on the near side. So that's Jake Riddle, the six foot two, 220 pound sophomore tight end. Able to pick up about four yards on the play, so it's going to make it about third down and six. Football sits on the Hurricane 20 yard line, 9 14 remaining. This is the opening drive of the afternoon for the Hurricanes. Again, that comes on the heels of a pick. Thrown by Mason Tatum to Devin Martin as the builders try to bring pressure. Quarterback flushed. Tries to find a receiver here on the near side. Did he get his feet down? He did not. So great job by the defensive back. That was Paul Massey Jr. to not allow the wide receiver, who actually made the catch, not get his feet down. He pushed him out of bounds. That is legal. So great job. That was DeMonte Foreman, or Furman, I'm sorry, DeMonte Furman who was the intended receiver, pushed out of bounds. So that's going to bring up fourth down and six. 8.48 remaining in the first. Hurricanes set to punt. Leland Gurney back to receive. Nice high punt. There is an opportunity for return. Gurney able to find a crease and surge up field to midfield. So that's going to be excellent, excellent, excellent starting field position for the Builders. We're at the 836 mark in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. Coming in two to at this afternoon's game, both of these teams pretty, you know, mirror one another as it relates to points per game. The Hurricanes come in averaging about 29 points a game, while the Builders now, I'll give you that stat in just a second, where the builders stand as far as points per game is Massey. Looks to the sideline to get the final call from the offensive coordinator. Four wide receivers, one setback. Mason. Tries to get it to his tight end. Tight coverage on the outside. It was intended for Ricardo Corpus. He was covered up by the defender. That's Oliver Kaloda. He's actually a sophomore linebacker out in coverage. This is going to bring up second down and 10 now for the Builders. Football sitting right at, mid, at the midfield stripe as Tatum looks. Finds his receiver in the middle of the field. That's going to be a first down for the Builders is T.K. Petty. So far on unstoppable in the passing game, able to find again another soft spot in the middle of that hurricane zone. Builders with tempo. Tatum, set back, green, green, up the middle. Big hole, green. Unable to break that tackle, but he's going to pick up enough for another first down as Devin Martin brings Curtis down at the 21-yard line. Builders, first, first down. Builders, again, hit the defense with a little bit of tempo. Zero coverage right now. If a receiver can get behind a defensive back, Builders go with the run instead. Curtis Green able to maintain his balance and be able to pick up positive yards off the left side. Able to pick up about four. 
So this is going to be second down and six upcoming for the Builders clock. 7.20, first period, first quarter, I'm sorry. As the Builders mount their second drive of the quarter. Builders were able to get around this position on their last drive, but turned it over at the 16-yard line of the Hurricanes due to an interception is green. Nothing much over the left side. That's going to bring up third down and about five. Closer to six for the Builders. As both teams make substitutions. Golden opportunity for the Builders. They can pick up a first down, of course, without scoring. Ball is at the 16. Tatum. Got a chance to look at the defense. Four wide receiver set, one setback next to Tatum. Tatum. Try back shoulder throw to Corpus. Corpus unable to bring it in. It was a nice job of communication between Tatum and Corpus. The football hit Corpus in his midsection, but he just wasn't able to bring it in. So it's going to bring up fourth down and five. Ball at the 16 of the Hurricanes and the Builders are going to go for it. Builders elect to not kick the field goal. Play clock at 13. Tatum with time. Tatum, no pressure. Able to find his receiver, but was it enough for a first, depending on the spot? And I think that was not enough. He's going to come up about one yard short of the yard to go to pick up the first down. So that'll be a turnover on downs for the Builders. So for the second time today in the first quarter, Builders able to mount a drive, able to get deep in Hurricane territory, only to turn the football over. First, it was off of an interception. This time, a turnover on downs. So here come the Hurricanes again. As Reed Shapaya, nope, it's not Reed Shapaya. We have a different quarterback into the football game. Design quarterback keeper. Quarterback is going to be brought down on the play by Christian Walker. So Trey Lunsford is the quarterback now. Trey Lunsford in the Wildcats set. This time, Builders are ready for it. No gain on the play, so that's going to bring up second down and one. Football right outside of the 20-yard line, closer to the 21. So third down and one. 5.25 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Builders have come away empty on two deep drives into Hurricane territory. Builders able to stop him on third down. Lundford stopped by Paul Massey Jr. Jr. able to knife into the backfield and bring the quarterback down behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of about two on the play, so that's gonna bring up fourth down and three. That's gonna be a punting situation. As Gavin Gundiker comes on to punt it away. Back to receive for the Builders, as always, Leland Gurdy, the senior. This could be blocked. Builders unable to cause the mistake on special teams. That turns into a very good punt for the Hurricanes as Gertie is gonna step out of bounds at around about the 32, 33 yard line. But a free blitzer on the outside for the Builders wasn't able to force a block punt by the Hurricanes. So the Builders will start their third drive of this afternoon's game at their own 34-yard line, four, 14 left in the first. 
So again, the builders doing a great job of showing they can move the ball on this defense. So far, we just don't have any points to show for it. Man in motion is Gertie. Here's Tatum. Screen to Gertie. Gertie met quickly and violently at the point of attack. That's George Jelaya with that tackle. Man, he brought a lot of bad intentions into that tackle. But Gertie able to pick up one on first down. Here's Tatum. Tatum, time. Middle of the field. Gertie, wide open first down builders. So the builders on offense have something going. As Mason Tatum able to find Gertie in the middle of the field once again for another first down. So the sticks move. New line of scrimmage, the 47-yard line of the Builders. 314 remaining in the first. No score here at the Apprentice Athletic Field. As the back motions. Tatum pressured, sacked. Tatum sacked in the backfield. Wow. Knifing into the backfield for that stop is Teddy Wilson. Teddy, Teddy Wilson, the sophomore linebacker, folks. He goes six foot one at 90. Quick first step by that young man, able to get into the backfield to get Tatum down. Big loss on the play that's going to breathe. That's going to be about second and 16 upcoming for the Builders. Tatum gives a call to the offensive line to let them know where to slide the coverage. Inside handoff. Back right up the middle, trucks a guy. Good piece of running there by Willis Walton. Willis Walton, the six foot, 210 pound freshman for the Builders. So the future looking bright for the Builders at the running back position based off of that run. Hurricanes, single high safety, we get a whistle. Timeout, Lewisburg. This will be their first charge timeout of the half. And as you can hear from the referee, Kevin Salmanine, Salmanine, we're gonna take a timeout. So this will be the first time out taken by Lewisburg. This will be the first time out taken by Lewisburg. So early on, I was giving you a stat to let you know what to expect out of these teams offensively. And coming into this game, the Hurricanes averaging about 29 points per game. Builders coming in averaging about 36. Now, the Builders' points per game average is going to be skewed due to the 80 to nothing win they had last time we were together over Central International College. But if you take that game completely away, the builders are averaging about 27 points per game. So this should be a competitive game uh, this afternoon for both teams. Builders sound in the passing game so far with Mason Tatum. As Tatum drops. No, all kinds of time he finds Petty. Petty able to step out of steps out of bounds at the 31 yard line of the Hurricanes. And at this rate, and at this rate, Petty could possibly be somewhere around 100 yards receiving yards in the first half. He is just running free, wide open in the secondary of the Hurricanes. Now there's a good chance he could get lost in the shuffle because he's not that big. He's a five, he's only five foot nine, about 165 pounds, but of course plays a lot bigger as the give up the middle. Once again by the Builders, huge gaping hole in the middle of that offense defense. Willis Walton able to pick up enough for another first down. Sticks move. 
clock continues to move. We're now under a minute as we get a whistle. We have an injured player. Timeout for injury. So we have a timeout. So we'll take a timeout, and while they attend to the injured player, we'll step aside. They give you an opportunity to hear from Whirlies. We'll be back. That's Devin Martin. Welcome back. The player that was injured prior to our timeout is up and walking off the field under his own power. That's Devin Martin, one of the Hurricanes defensive back. He is actually the defensive back that picked off Mason Tatum to halt one of the earlier drives by the Builders, but the Builders driving again as Wilson. Tries to find something on first down. Picks up about four yards on the play, closer to three. So it's going to make it second down and seven, as that may, depending on what the builders do, may be the final play of the quarter. Game clock now with 15. This will probably be the last play of the first quarter as Tatum looks at the sideline. Game clock at nine, eight, seven, six. Five, I think the builders will try the builders will not get this playoff before the first quarter expires great first quarter of action folks neither team has scored but the builders able to mount a few scoring drives but so far have come this is empty so we're going to take a timeout to give you an opportunity here from Bayport when we come back we'll start the second quarter Stayed up 15-13 late in the second. And welcome back, everyone, to Senior Day here at the Apprentice School Athletic Field on the campus of Newport News Shipbuilding right here in Newport News, Virginia. Once again, so glad you can join us. And we have had one heck of a ball game, folks. Unfortunately, neither team has scored. 
That's not a bad thing. That means neither team is winning, neither team is losing. But so far, competitive all the way around is Tatum. In the backfield, second down and seven is Tatum. Looks. Tries to get it to Wilson, who wasn't expecting the football. So that's going to be an incomplete pass on second down. Builders have been very good so far on third down, especially third down and long. Builders able to exploit that soft spot in the middle of the Hurricane defense. And we've seen time and time again in the first quarter, we've seen Petty, and we've also seen Gertie able to find that soft spot in the middle of the zone and pick up enough for the first down. So the Builders need seven to keep this drive alive here on third down as Tatum alone in the backfield. Tatum steps up. Step right into pressure. So there's going to be no gain on the play by Tatum. So Coach Brown has a decision to make, and it looks like he's going to make it as Jeremiah Morgan is going to make his way onto the field. This will be a 36-yard field goal attempt to give the Builders their first lead of the game. Prior to the game, the wind was blowing at about 13 miles per hour across the field. Let's see if that affects Jeremiah Morgan's kick at all. Kick is up and it is good. So the wind, so that the wind plays no factor at all as Jeremiah Morgan fails a 36 yard field goal at the 14.06 mark of the second quarter, and the Builders now lead three to nothing over the Hurricanes. So again, Builders able to capitalize on another drive in deep into enemy territory, into Hurricane territory. Able to tack on a 36-yard field goal. Again, at the 14.06 mark of the second. Again, Builders, on all their drives, folks, they've been able to get into Hurricane territory. So there's only a matter of time before they're able to break through and get the fault ball into the end zone. Builders doing most of it through the air. But the times that they have gone to the running game, it has been very effective right up the middle of that Hurricane defense is Jeremiah Morgan's kickoff skips along the ground, live football. Hurricanes, builders converge and stop the Hurricane returner inside the five yard line. And that is where the Hurricanes will start this next drive deep in their own territory. Good job on coverage, on kickoff coverage by the builders. as the Hurricane offense makes its way back onto the field. As they stay with their running quarterback, Trey, Lunf Trey Lunsford, Trey with the carry. Stop, driven back and down. Beautiful tackle there. by Kayton Schuler, six foot two, 235 pounds out of Richmond. No gain on the play, second down and 10. I thought he may have, may have picked up maybe one. Okay, there it is. So second down and about nine upcoming. As Lunsford set back to his right, Lunsford keeps. Just goes right into the heart of the defense. Not much there. As the Hurricanes are playing it safe on offense, not really trusting Lunsford so far to throw the football. Not a lot of passing so far in the ball game from the Hurricanes, honestly, because I don't think that that's what they really lean on offensively. In an earlier loss this season, their quarterback attempted 32 passes for 171 yards. 
so they don't throw the ball an awful lot. And with Lunsford in, they've decided to run, and the builders key in. Another stop in the backfield by the builder defense. Able to knife in and make that stop was Shai Sean Jackson, the 5'10", 175-pound sophomore defensive back. So a beautiful job of holding the Hurricanes to minimal gains on their first three downs of this possession. So this should give the builders fantastic field position, depending on the return as Leland Gurdy is back to receive around the Hurricane 40. Play clock at 10. Hurricane still trying to get set. Play clock now at four. Here's the punt. Gertie. Gertie lets it bounce around the 35 yard line. It trickles forward to about the 38. And that is where the builders will start their next drive first and 10 in plus territory 11 31 remaining in the first and the builders holding to a three to nothing lead so defensively the builders have been playing well offensively the builders have been playing well so let's see what the coaching staff can cook up here to try and get the builders into the end zone first and 10 38 of the hurricanes Tatum with Walton. I'm sorry, that's Green. Green with the carry. Green bounces. Able to get outside. Only picked up about two yards. Still positive yardage. Builders have run a lot of four wide receiver sets. Today, this time, they're in their 11 personnel. One tight end, one tailback. Tailback is green. Green over the middle. Green able to surge up field for about five on that carry. So it's going to bring up third down in about three. 10 40 left in the first half. As the builders go back to the four wide receiver set, single setback next to Tatum. Tatum, inside handoff. If he's able to break that tackle, oh! Green! If he was able to take that tackle, folks, that was going to be the first score of the afternoon. But as it goes, that is enough for builder first down. So that puts the line of scrimmage now at the 32. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My perspective of the field is, is off. That is the 27 yard line of the Hurricanes. Builders go back to a three wide receiver set. Single tight end, single tailback as Tatum keeps. Tatum on the carry. As Tatum is able to pick up about two on the play, so that's going to put it right at the 25-yard line. That's going to make it second down and eight. Nice job by this offensive line, who are somewhat, I don't know, uh, outweighed by the defensive front, but they've been able to do a great job of keeping Tatum clean as Tatum goes to Corpus, Corpus right through his hands. He was covered on the play by Devin Martin, who actually went out injured, but he's back in the football game. Good to see that. But that would hit Corpus in the hands. And most people believe as a receiver, if it hits you in the hands, folks, you are supposed to catch it. If not, you should play defensive back. So the builders, four wide receiver set, third down, eight, ball at the 25. Tatum, single set back to his left is Green. Tatum steps up, delivers. Middle of the field once again. Gertie able to shake a couple of tackles. Still going. Did they stop his forward progress? I believe they did. So they stop his forward progress, but Gertie able to pick up enough 
for the first down. So I believe that it's inside the 10 yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the builders at the Hurricane six yard line. Golden opportunity here for the Builders to go up two scores and put a lot of pressure on the Hurricane offense. Tatum. Gets the final call from the offensive coordinator. Possibly changes the play. This would be a great time for the Builders to run up the middle with Green. Instead, Tatum. Finds Green open in the left flat. Touchdown! Builder. That is a eight yard pitch and catch from Tatum to Green for eight yards. And that's going to give the Builders a nine to nothing lead here in the second quarter as Jeremiah Morgan set to attempt the point after. And you knew it was only a matter of time before the builders were able to break through and get on the scoreboard with a touchdown and the point after it's up and it is good. Builders now 10 to nothing over the visiting Hurricanes from Lewisburg, North Carolina. And again, builders have pretty much spent the entire afternoon on the, on the Lewisburg side of the 50 yard line. Again, They've been able to get deep into to Lewisburg territory, but weren't able to break through on the scoreboard with a touchdown, but this time they do. Beautiful play call, beautiful execution that time by the builder offense to find Curtis Green out in the left flat, wide open for an eight yard catch and score. So with that two possession lead, that helps out your defense big time. As Morgan boots it away. And the Hurricanes allow it to go into the end zone for a touchback. So 8-14 remaining in the first half here at the Apprentice School Athletic Field. And the Builders on senior day have a two possession lead, 10 to nothing again. All the scoring so far for the Builders or in the game have come from the Builders thanks to a 36-yard field goal by Jeremiah Morgan at the 14.06 mark and an eight-yard pitch and catch from Tatum to Green at the 8.14 mark of the second quarter. As the Hurricanes go quickly. Pass complete to Foreman, but he's blasted over here on the near side by the builder defense. About a five-yard pickup on first down, so that'll make it second down and five. Football sits at the Hurricane 30. Hurricanes go back to their original starting quarterback. That's Shapaya. Shapaya. Sidearm throw out into the left flat to his running back again, who is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. So that is how and that's Fred Foreman with the catch. And I said earlier that that two possession lead really helps out the defense. Well, it does because it allows the defense to actually relax on defense and just play because they don't have to worry about giving up points and losing the lead. So your offense getting a lead does help your defense and the way they play tremendously as the builders unable to stop Foreman from picking up a first down and then some. Foreman able to pick up the first down on a wheel route out of the backfield. So that moves the Hurricanes for the first time into plus territory. So it's going to make it now first down at the Builder 44-yard line. Game clock down to 630. Builders leading 10 to nothing. 
This is the first real drive that the Hurricanes have mounted all day. Quarterback steps back, unloads, has a receiver behind the defense, and that's going to be a touchdown. A 44-yard touchdown pass. And just like that, the Hurricanes are on the board. That goes from that goes from Sharpia. Now I'm not sure. I believe that was Jaden Flood Brown because we have two number twelves. One is a defensive back, and the other one is a running back. I believe that was Flood Brown. With the catch, and the PAT is up and good. 6-10 remaining here in the second quarter, and the builder lead is now 10-7, and we'll step away to allow you to hear these messages. We'll be right back. And we are back. Welcome back to the athletic, the apprentice athletic field. Again, here on the campus of Newport News Shipbuilding right here in Newport News, Virginia, as we just witnessed the Hurricanes get their first score of this afternoon's contest as they kick it away to the Builders. Football bounces. That's a law of live football. Builders able to get on top of it. That was close. 44-yard touchdown pass from Shapaya to Flood Brown. The point after was good at the 6-10 mark of the second quarter. And we've got a ball game, folks. 10-7, Builders lead. As we get set for the next set of downs upcoming for the Builders is Tatum who's pretty much played a, a clean game all day today. Except for that one pick he threw early in the first quarter. Otherwise, has been very good at the quarterback position as the give over the right side goes to Walton. Nothing doing on the right side. No gain on the play. As Fields comes in and makes the tackle. 5.50 and ticking remaining in the first half. Builders have pretty much been able to do what they want in the passing game today. It's Tatum empties the backfield. Gertie in motion. Here's Tatum looking for Gertie, going to Gertie. Oh! Nice job at the defensive back position of tipping that away is Devin Martin. Devin Martin already has a, a pick today. Had Tatum been able to lead Gertie upfield a little bit more with that pass, we might have been talking about a score change in the football game, but as it is, incomplete pass. It's going to bring up third down and long, which hasn't been much of a problem for the builders as they've been repeatedly getting receivers wide open in the middle of that defense for the Hurricanes. Hurricanes condense their defense down inside 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. If the Builders can get at least one receiver behind them, they could go for a score as Tatum pressured, delivers. In a lot of traffic, but the pass is incomplete. I believe that was intended for Gertie, but there were two players in the same part of the field, but we have a player down. That's going to be George Jelaya. My time for injury. So we're going to get an official's timeout to give the 
trainers an opportunity to work on the injured players. So we're going to step away and let you hear from Worley's. We'll be back. Here, great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers. Really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. Like the team, everybody's a team player. Um, all about doing the right thing for the customer. Taking pride in your work. It's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. We got a great team. We have fun together. From my plumbers to my air conditioning guys to my crawl space guys, everybody like works together as a team. Um, they're just phenomenal. We have training programs. We like it when people come in, they don't really know what they want to do, and we're able to help them find a trade and do things such as like a paid for apprenticeship programs for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Uh, we've sent people as far as Texas to also doing them here locally. We just truly like to see our people grow and succeed and get to the next step of their career. We want people here who truly aspire to be the best in their, in their fields. has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaydeportCU.org to learn more. And we're back. Welcome back as we witness George Jayla injured for the Hurricanes being helped off the field currently. So we still have a stoppage in play and we're keeping a close eye on it. They gave his knee the stability test. Um, not really sure whether that came back positive or negative. I, I never want to speculate on an injury, but... Um, just by the looks of it, we, we may not see him back on the field to play for the rest of the afternoon. So, Builders, now fourth and 10, put the ball away from their own 22-yard line. Line drive kick by the Builders, taken at about the 45-yard line. So, it's only going to count as about a four-yard return by Brandon Wright. So that's going to be good fielding position, good starting field position for the Hurricanes. So they'll begin their next drive right at the midfield stripe. Builder defense gave up a 44 yard touchdown pass earlier when Shapaya hit Flood Brown over the middle. This time, the run. Running back bounces it to the outside on the left side of the defense. Nice pickup on the gain is Marion Rogers. He's five foot 10 freshman running back. And that's going to be about a nine yard pickup on first down. So the builders on defense give up a big play on first down so second and one football now sits just outside the 40 yard line of the builders 427 remaining in the first builders with a 10 to 7 lead pitch nearly brought the back down in the backfield but there's a flag Marion Rogers with the carry this may be coming back I believe this will be a holding call on the offense. So that'll be 10 yards. Holding offense, number 78, 10 yard penalty, replay, second down. So that's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
not 10 yards from, whoop, I take that back. It is 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So that's essentially going to make it second down and 11 upcoming. After the penalty, ball backs up to the Hurricanes. So the penalty puts the football line. back in Midas territory for the Hurricanes. 4-17 left in the first half. Second and 11. Builders with a gift here. Handoff. Rogers met the backfield, stepped out of the out of the tackle, but unable to get away from the second. That's Josiah Beecham knifing in from that secondary to make that stop. Josiah Beecham, 186, stands at six foot tall. So the Bills with an opportunity to get the Hurricanes off the field on third down to give themselves an opportunity to mount a scoring drive here in the final three and a half minutes of the first half. Shapaya, two wide receivers set, fullback, tailback, pressure. He steps up, but he's gonna be taken down, but he was still able to get the pass away. Walker with the pressure, and that forces the errant pass. So that's going to make it now fourth down and 10 as the punting unit comes onto the field for the Hurricanes. Gertie back to receive for the Builders. So the Builders will get the football back with enough time and three timeouts to mount some type of scoring drive heading into the half. Play clock now at 15. Back to the team. Leland Gurney all the way back inside his own 15. Hurricanes try to directional punt it out of bounds. It doesn't go out of bounds, but it does come to a screeching halt at the 28-yard line. So that's going to be good field position. That's going to be really good field positioning when Mason Tatum brings the builder offense back onto the field. Oh, I didn't see it, folks. Way back where the punter kicked the football, folks. There's a flag. There is no foul on the play. The ball is tipped. So I believe the Hurricanes were hoping for a roughing the punter call, but the ball was tipped, so there's no foul on the builders as the offense makes its way onto the playing surface. 3-12 remaining in the first half. Builders holding to a 10-7 lead over the Lewisburg Hurricanes out of Lewisburg, North Carolina. Here's Tatum, four wide receivers, one tailback to his right. His tailback is green. Tatum looks, finds Gertie. Gertie with the catch. So Leland Gurdy with the big catch to the 46 yard line. So that's an 18 yard pickup. Clock continues to tick, 253 remaining in the first half. Here's Tatum. Clock continues to tick, play clock at 20, game clock at 240. Tatum with the play change. Tatum, low snap, able to get it. Corpus with a catch. And he's able to step out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock. So that is a... That is another 18-yard pickup for the Builders. So the Builders now at the 33. Actually, that's a 21-yard pickup on the play. Tatum to Corpus. Builders in business. Clock rolling. I thought he stepped out of bounds, but the clock continues to run 150 left in the first half. Tatum, pitch to Green. 
Green over the right side, able to get out of bounds, and he's able to pick up enough for another builder first down, I believe. So that's a good play call by the offensive staff for the builders to catch the Hurricanes off balance, expecting pass, but instead they come with a run, and that's enough for a first down. New line of scrimmage now, the 23-yard line, so exactly 10 yards picked up on that play. Play clock is at 20, so Tatum has plenty of time. Inside hand off the green. Green, met, and drop. Jordan Miller from that linebacker position blew that one up. Now the builders have all three timeouts, so they don't have to be in a hurry. They can, they can use their timeouts. Second and 10. Clock continues to tick, now down to a minute and 10. Hurricanes with a single high safety as they come after Tatum on the blitz. Blitz picked up nicely by the defense, offensive line. Dump off to the running back who's able to get all the way down, I believe. Nope, he's in for a touchdown. 24 yard touchdown pass from Tatum to Milton Walton, Willis Walton, who absolutely put his head down and sniffed out the goal line for a touchdown. So that pushes the builder lead to 16 to seven. Again, on the heels of a 24 yard touchdown pass from Tatum. From Tatum to Walton, as Jeremiah Morgan attempts to point after. The kick is up and it is good. So 17 to seven is our new score again on the heels of a 24 yard touchdown pass from Tatum to Walton. That is huge going into the halftime locker room, 47 seconds remaining in the first half and the builders have just if you are Coach Vincent Brown, you have to be ecstatic at what you're getting out of your football team here in this first half. They've almost played a flawless first half. Again, outside of that one pick that was thrown early in the first quarter, the Builders have pretty much played a, a clean game. Not a lot of penalties at all either. There was one drive where things kind of got stalled out because of consecutive holding penalties. But really, folks, outside of that, the Builders have played a really, really clean game against a good Hurricane football team from Lewisburg, North Carolina. Jeremiah Morgan kicks it away. Hurricanes. Fumble it into the end zone, but does elect to bring it out anyway as a return. Has an opportunity, but he is tripped up and brought down at the 39-yard line. Exciting return, but Fred Foreman finally brought down. So the Hurricanes come back on the field with their quarterback. Reed Shapaya, 36 seconds, Hurricanes with two timeouts. So depending on what they do here on first down, that will dictate what their plans are for the rest of the half. As Shapaya tries to find his receiver and does, able to get over into plus territory, but he's brought down at the 43-yard line, and the Hurricanes do not call a timeout. And they now call a timeout. So 26 seconds. Timeout. We'll Lewisburg, their second charge timeout. Lewisburg takes their second timeout of the first half. That'll leave them one with 26 seconds left. Now, their kicker, Gavin Gundiker is pretty sound in the kicking game. He's actually on the far side, um, actually warming up as it is. 
He can hit it from 40. At least, I believe so far on the uh, season, his long is 41. I may be wrong on that, but I believe that's what I read. His long this season so far is 41. So in order for them to give him an opportunity at a 41-yard kick, they need to get the football to down around the 24-yard line to give him a comfortable opportunity at a long kick. But right now the football sits at the 42-yard line of the Builders, so they are nowhere near field goal near near field goal range. But again, they do have two timeouts and a first down, so they can still test the middle of the football field on this possession and use a timeout to stop the clock. It, but other than that, everything else needs to be close to the sideline where they can make a catch and get out of bounds. As Shapia, able to get it out to his running back, who's able to scamper out of bounds. So that's going to pick. That's going to be about a pickup of about four or five yards. Marion Rogers with the catch actually is a shorter gain than that. It was only about two or three yards. But more importantly, the clock does stop for the Hurricanes. 21 seconds left in the half. Builders 17 to seven over the Hurricanes. Quarterback looks, fires. Incomplete on the far side. So Sharpia's pass falls incomplete. 15 seconds left on the, play, left on the game clock. After that six second play. As you can hear the PA announcer laying in the crowd, no, it's third down, big down upcoming here for the Builders. Even if they do stop the Hurricanes, I do believe they will go forward on fourth down to Shrapia. Looks, flushed, pressured, able to find it to see, but I believe he was bobbling it, but they're going to give him the catch anyway. I thought he was bobbling it as he goes out of bounds. So that does stop the clock. Not enough for a first down, though. He's going to be about three yards short, so he's going to bring up third, fourth down, and three. Ball at the 31, 35-yard line. So from here, you're looking at about a 52-yard attempt. So depending on what happens, the Hurricanes have only one more play before they have to decide what they're going to do with the football, whether they're going to kick or not. Rodgers does not get down, and the clock expires. And that's going to be a mistake for Rodgers, as Rodgers does not go down immediately. If he had, that would have left about two seconds on the clock. That's the end of the first half. For a field goal attempt, but instead Rodgers continues to try to score and runs out the clock, gets tackled. Game clock at double zero, and that'll do it for the first half of action. And what an amazing half of action it was. All of our store scoring got started with a 36-yard field goal by Jeremiah Morgan early in the second quarter. That was followed up by a eight-yard touchdown pass from Mason Tatum to Green to get the push the builder lead to 10 to nothing. But shortly afterwards, a 44-yard touchdown pass from Sharpia to Flood Brown put the Hurricanes on the board at 10 to seven. And finally, the Builders round out all the scoring with a 24-yard touchdown pass from Mason Tatum to Walton late in the half. And there you, that's, that'll put us where we are going into the half score-wise. 17 to seven Builders as we go into halftime on senior day. Again, so glad you could join us. So as they take a break, we'll do the same, and we'll be back with second half action. Uh, again, our halftime score, the Builders 17, the Lewisburg Hurricanes 7. We'll see you in the third. We'll be back. Truly, truly care because they love their jobs and they want to learn more. What I like about Worley's is the people, uh, the team I work with every day. My favorite thing about working at Worley's is that it's more like a family. I mean, it is work, but it's not. They actually treat me like a person and not a number. And this is the first company where I really feel like I belong. Here at Worley's, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers, they really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. Like the team, everybody's a team player. 
um, all about doing the right thing for the customer, taking pride in your work. It's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. we got a great team. We have fun together from my plumbers to my air conditioning guys to my crawl space guys. Everybody, like, works together as a team. Um, they're just phenomenal. We have training programs. We like it when people come in and don't really know what they want to do, and we're able to help them find a trade and do things such as, like, a pay-for apprenticeship programs for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Uh, we've sent people as far as Texas. To also doing them here locally. We just truly like to see our people grow and succeed and get to the next step of their career. We want people here who truly aspire to be the best in their, in their fields. Tuition assistant, tuition assistance, high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit bayportcu.org to learn more.
And welcome back, everyone. We are still at halftime here on Senior Day at the Apprentice School. Honorees were recognized prior to the football game this afternoon. We had eight players that are on their way out of the program, very impactful players, players that will be missed next season. But right now, they are still a part of the program, and they are contributing to this halftime lead that the builders are currently enjoying of 17-7. Again, scoring was thanks to a 36-yard field goal in the second by Jeremiah Morgan. Gave the builders their first lead of three to nothing. Tatum to Green for an eight-yard touchdown pass later in the second. That made the score 10 to nothing. But the Hurricanes came right back with their own scoring drive, a 44-yard touchdown pass from Shapaya to Flood Brown. That made the score 10 to seven, but the builders were able to put a little bit more space between them and the Hurricanes going into the halftime locker room by a score by a 24 yard touchdown pass from Tatum to Walton with 46, 47 seconds remaining in the first half. And that is where we currently sit as we come out of the half into the third quarter. As far as your stats in the first half, they're all builders to be honest with you folks. Mason Tatum, 14 of 22 for 199 yards, two touchdowns, and that one mishap with the football led to an interception. Other than that, he has played a very clean game here in the first half. Builders need more of that in the second half. As far as rushing, uh, Curtis Green led all ball carriers for the Builders, eight carries, 38 yards. His longest carry was 13 yards. In the receiving core, it was T.K. Petty, four catches, 68 yards. Uh, he was on pace to actually go into the halftime locker room with about 100 yards receiving. His longest catch of the day was 27 yards. For the Hurricanes, their quarterback, Reed Shapaya, 9 of 12, 124 yards. That 44-yard touchdown strike to Flood Brown was his touchdown cat, uh, pass. Marion Rogers, two carries, 10 yards. He leads all ball carriers. And it was Flood Brown who had that one catch for 44 yards. He is the leading receiver for the Hurricanes in the first half. So again, a lot of the scoring, of course, uh, builders able to do it both on the ground and in the air. Actually, both of their, both of their uh, scores actually came via the pass. Uh, one was a eight yard touchdown pass from Tatum to Green and a 24 yard touchdown pass to his other back, Walton for 24 yards. So the builders again, able to do what they wanted to do in the first half offensively. Let's see what they can do in the second half. The Hurricanes won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So they are going to receive the kickoff from Jeremiah Morgan. And with Jeremiah Morgan's kick, we are now underway with the second half, second half of action here on Senior Day at the Apprentice School Athletic Field as the Hurricanes with a good return of that short kickoff by the Builders. So that's going to set the Hurricanes up first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. So the Hurricanes come back with their starting quarterback, Reed Sharpaya. Single set back to his right. Four wide receivers set. Play clock at 16. Back in motion. Sharpaya out to his back. Catch is made. Able to get up field for about Four on the game. That pass goes to Melton out of the backfield. So there's going to bring up about second and six upcoming. Again, Builders, 17 to seven lead here early in the third. 82% cloud cover here today for this game. And you can kind of see it. It kind of has things kind of looking a little gray right now, but. That's the way the things look in the sky, not on the scoreboard of Shapaya. Pass out of the backfield on a wheel route. This time successful. Big game for the Hurricanes as they are able, Melton is able to get that wheel route out of the backfield all the way into plus territory down to the builder 30 yard line. 
That's going to be a 31-yard gain, I believe. 31 yards on that gain. So explosive play coming out of the halftime locker room for the Hurricanes. Builders defense so far in the game have pretty much been bend but don't break. As again, Sherpaya looks. Sidearm pass to the middle of the field to Flood Brown. That's going to be another big pickup. Down inside the 10-yard line now for the Hurricanes as they pick up the pace here offensively. That puts the ball at the 12-yard line. So that's a 27-yard pass from Shapaya to Flood Brown. First and goal. Hurricanes, 13.05 remaining in the third. As the Hurricanes threaten. Shapaya with the fake. Flushed out in the flat. Builders give chase, forces the pass out of bounds. So that's going to be an incomplete pass on first down. So it'll bring up second down and goal to go from the eight-yard line. It's second goal. As Coach Spellman makes a change at quarterback, he brings in the running quarterback, Lunsford. Lunsford played a lot of minutes in the first half. Comes back to pick up where he left off in the second half. So second down and goal. Ball sits on the eight-yard line. Clock stopped at 12.47. Pretty sure the builders know what's coming. Lunsford yet to, yet to attempt to pass as he runs it behind blocks. Able to get down inside the five-yard line to about the two. So that's going to bring up third and goal now. As they try to hit the builders with tempo. And we get a stoppage. A brief stoppage. Here's Lunsford. Third and goal. Three-yard line. Lunsford looks to get to the outside. Unable to get in, I don't believe. It's going to be fourth down. So Lunsford was stopped right around the one, if not inside the one. And I don't believe that the field goal unit is even going to put their helmet on as Lunsford. And the offense gets ready. Lunsford tries to get in. I believe the builders stopped it. Both the builders with a goal line stand. That's going to be a turnover on down. Nice job by the defensive front to answer the call. To stop Lunsford short of the goal line and the builders turn, turn the Hurricanes away. Beautiful job up front of just clogging up all the lanes, rush lanes by the, uh, by the defensive line. Builders were able to tackle Lunsford and then finish off the tackle by pushing him backwards around the one or two yard line. So the builders with the football, Tatum backed up, of course, to his own goal line. Three wide receiver set, single set back to his left. Play clock now at 12. Tatum sets the protection. Play clock now at five. Green. I believe that's Walton, folks. I don't think he made it out of the end zone. I don't believe he made it out. And that's going to be a safety. So just like that, the builders' defense turns the Hurricanes away from getting points, but the builder offense goes out and gives the Hurricane defense points. So that's another two points on the scoreboard that now makes the builder lead. 17 to 9. So, of course, with that, the Hurricanes will get the football back at the 1144 mark of the third. So, Walton was not able to get out of the end zone. And was tackled for a safety. Okay, and that's going to, be, of course, be two points. So the builders will 
turn the ball back over to the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes will go back on offense. Who came out with their first possession of the second half, drove it all the way down to the one yard line, but were turned away by the Builder defense on fourth and goal. But again, able to get two points out of that possession for the Builders on offense when Walton was tackled in the end zone for a safety. Game far from over if you're the Builders. Still a lot of football left to be played. So here's Jeremiah Morgan set to kick it back to the Hurricanes. As short kickoff taken at the 20. Here are the Hurricanes on the return. Another huge return for the Hurricanes. That's Fred Foreman, who finally gets pushed out of bounds. Wow. So he was actually able to get the football over midfield. Nope, actually he isn't. The football is going to be placed at the 46-yard line. It took the officials a minute or two to finally spot the football. It kind of looked like it was going to be in plus territory for the Hurricanes, but as it is, the football is now at their own 46-yard line, 137 left in the third. 17 to 9 is our score now as the Builders able to stop the running back deep in his own backfield. That is Melton met in the backfield initially by big number 60, Alden Custer. So that's a four-yard loss on first down, so that's big. That puts... The Hurricanes off schedule. Second down at 14 upcoming. 11.09 on the game clock. 20 on the play clock. Ashapaya fakes. Looks to pass. He's flushed. Able to get away from the pass rush, but his pass goes incomplete. Thankfully so because he was wide open in the flat. Had a better pass been delivered, that would have been a first down. But as it goes, incomplete. Third down and 14 now for the Builders. So big down here for the Builders. Surely if they are able to pick up a first down, the Hurricanes will punt. But the Builders have some business to take care of right here, third and 14, as they go to their long wide out pass in, intended for Jalen Brown. The six foot six, 214 pound wide out does not make the catch over the middle, and that's going to bring up a punting situation for the Hurricanes. 10 50 remaining in the third as Gavin Gundiker. Set to punt it away. Leland Gurdy back to receive for the Builders. Kick is away. Gurdy calls for a fair catch, and he will receive it at the 23-yard line of the Builders. So that's where Tatum will take over with the offense. Looking to mount another scoring drive. In the first half, the Builders were able to do whatever they wanted to offensively, let's be honest. Um, outside of a couple of trips into the deep into hurricane territory that were, put, that were turned away, they were able to move the football with relative ease. Went to the running game when they needed to, and it produced, but it was the passing game that they were able to make some hay as here in the running game, nothing doing over the left side. As Green is met at the point of attack and driven backwards, Mike Anderson, six foot two, 200 pound freshman, defensive end, able to make that stop. I'm sorry, that's Mikey Anderson, Mikey Anderson with the stop. So that looks like it might have been about a two yard loss on the play, so second and 12 upcoming for Tatum in the offense. Builders, four wide receiver set. 
Single setback. Tatum. Looks. Can't find anybody. Corpus flashes open. Tatum able to deliver a strike to the near side first down. So that'll push the football out to the 36-yard line. Builders will continue this drive. Ten thirty-five remaining in the first half. I'm sorry, in the third quarter. Tatum looks to the sideline. Relays the message to the offense. It's Tatum back. Corpus open. Short gain on the play, but that's okay because a lot of times those short passes like that operate sort of like a run. So that was a successful play of five yards on first down. So that puts the football at the 41-yard line of the Builders. Clock continues to tick. Eight minutes and 50 seconds left in the third. Builders holding to a 17-9 lead after giving up a safety on their last possession. Walton tackled in the end zone. They were able to stop the Hurricanes on their next drive. Here's Tatum, inside handoff to Green. Green had an opening and was able to churn. Now when I say churn, he was able to churn ahead for about three additional yards after he was tackled. And that effort is going to be enough for Builder first down. So 8.15 remaining in the third and the Builders marching. Builders back to their full wide receiver set, single setback. Actually, there's a tight end in the football game. No, it's not. I take that back. I take that back. Tatum with time. Corpus. Once again, same thing. Corpus able to get about a five, six yard gain on first down. Nice job. Now, best believe what the builders are doing with these passes, they are baiting. They are baiting the defense because eventually these corners are going to start to sit on these short routes. And all they have to do is give a quick double move and somebody's going to be wide open for a long gain on the play. So there's a reason why the offense is going to these short, short passes. Again, not only do they operate that way with giving the opportunity for the corners to sit down on these routes, it also works like a run play as well. Oh, my goodness. Tatum threw it right to the defense. And that's going to be a turnover, but there is a flag. Now, it's over here on the near side, near the builder's sideline. Is there a possibility that Corpus might have been held prior to the pass? If so, that's going to be beard of football, and that will negate the turnover. We're going to get the call here shortly. There is no foul for holding on the play. There's an interception on the play. It is Lewisburg College's football. So they pick up the flag, which would have been a flag against Lewisburg. It would have been holding. But instead, that's going to be a turnover. So that was an issue with communication between the route that the receiver was supposed to run and the quarterback Tatum and that results in Tatum's second interception of the day. So 7.02 left in the third. Here come the Hurricanes. Flood Brown with the reception as Flood Brown starts to heat up with the receiving core. That's his third catch of the day. Remember he was the receiver that caught the 44-yard touchdown pass that gave the Hurricanes their first score in the second quarter. So his targets have started to creep up as another short pass completed. Yards after the catch for the Hurricanes, and that pushes the ball down inside the Builder, ter inside builder territory. Brandon Wright is the receiver. That's going to be first down 
football now on the 37 yard line of the builders hurricanes were able to move the football on their last drive but came up short on fourth and goal from the one as this pass is incomplete that pass intended for Quantes christian he's five foot ten 181 pounds that pass is more like for about a five foot 11 receiver as he lifts off the field after that incomplete pass. So clock is stopped at 6-12, remaining in the third. Builders trying to hold to their 17-9 lead. Shapaya, give, running back, minimal gain, if anything, on second down. So that's Zaire Williams with the carry. So that's going to bring up third down and long, exactly where the builders want them. Third down and 10 upcoming. So Shapaya, two tight ends, fullback, running back. Shapaya fakes. He's pressure. That should be a block in the back. No call. Shapaya. Pass falls incomplete, looking for his tight end out in the flat. Greer, I'm sorry, that's Riddle. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 10. Thought there was a block in the back. Nothing called by the officials. So decision time for the Hurricanes. It seems logical to just punt the football and pin them deep. I don't see the quarterback coming off the field. I believe they may just run the clock down and just call a timeout and decide what they're going to do in the timeout as Flood Brown makes his way out into the right flat. Play clock now at four. Trapayo looks, gets flushed. He will not pick up the first down, and folks, that's another turnover on downs. So the Builders hold on defense for the third time today. Lewisburg is going forward on fourth down, and for the third time today, the Builders defense has held. So the Builders will take over at the 524 mark of the third quarter, leading 17-9. as Mason Tatum brings his offensive unit back onto the field. And as we've seen throughout the day again, they've been able to move the football. A couple of miscues in the passing game has allowed Litchburg to stop them. But we saw this short passing game really, really be effective here in the third. They wanted to set up the halfback screen. There is no intentional grounding on the play. Number 23 was in the vicinity. They wanted to set up the halfback screen to green, but there was just too much penetration in Mason Tatum's face. And instead of making a, a bad decision with the football, he just threw it into the, into the ground near the feet of green, saving the downs. I mean, saving the yards, rather. So to make it second down and 10, ball on the 34. Game clock at 521. No changes to the play. Play clock at 10. Tatum guns it to TK, but it bounced right before it got to him. And we saw TK pretty much running wild in the secondary in the first half, yet to have a catch so far in the second half. So that's his first target of the second half. So third down and long upcoming for the Builders. 17 to nine is the score, Builders lead. Builders have led the entire game actually. It's Tatum, pressure, looking for Corpus. Corpus, able to fight up the receipt off the DB. Corpus is into the flat, he's open, and finally taken down in the open field but not after a huge game. Yeah. 
Nice job by Corpus with the strong hands on that play. That's a 47 yard reception for Corpus, who's all of a sudden come alive here in the second half. Was targeted a couple of times in the first half, but unable to haul in those catches. But all of a sudden here in the second half, he has stick them all over his gloves as a give up the middle to Green. Green able to pick up about three. That carry puts the builders just on the edge of the, of the red zone. Again, Corpus has come alive here in the second half from that wide receiver position. Th four wide receiver set, single set back. As the look goes to Corpus again, holds it in for the flag. So Ricardo Corpus, and they're going to call Ricardo Corpus for the pass offensive pass interference. But that negates a beautiful catch by Ricardo Corpus, who laid out to pull that in. Pass interference on the offense, number 14, 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay, second down. Boy, sometimes a penalty like that can be a drive killer. So that pushes the football all the way back to the 35-yard line. After the penalty, ball placed on the 35-yard line, Lewis got it. So that went from being a, a deep in the red zone opportunity second to second down and 17, if not more. I think that's more than 17. That's, that's second down and 22 for the Builders. 332 left in the third. Tatum, give, Green, behind his blocks. Green rolled his blocks for about a six yard carry on second down. They're still gonna make it third and long. And again, this, this, this afternoon, the Builders have been somewhat efficient on third down. I was trying to see what the first half stats were. I don't see it right away, but I do know that they were extremely efficient in the first half on third down and long particularly with Petty and Gertie. Again, Gertie yet to get a target here in the second half goes in motion. Here's Tatum, pressure. Able to find Gurney with the one-handed catch. Inside the five-yard line, and the Builders will have first and goal right there. Excellent touch on the football by Mason Tatum to get it up and over the defense and drop it inside the bucket, that bucket being Gurney's hands right at the five-yard line. So the clock continues to tick. Two minutes, 15 seconds left in the third. Builders with a great scoring opportunity here. First down. Builders spread out the hurricane defense. Green next to Tatum. Tatum keeps. Tatum met and dropped for a loss on the play. Nice job of anticipating that run from that linebacker position is Jacob Galuzzo. Okay, so they put the football back at the original line of scrimmage. I thought Mason Tatum might have been dropped for about a one or two yard loss. So that'll bring up second down and goal. All of a sudden, Mason Tatum to Ricardo Corpus has been there. Maybe we can revisit that opportunity again as Green changes sides. Here's Tatum, pressured and sacked. Tatum, sacked the play. Tatum had no shot on that play as True Robinson came on a linebacker blitz from the right side and leveled Tatum. I don't care how tough of a player you are, that hurt. 
So there's a loss on the play of five yards. So that pushes the football back to the 10 yard line now as we get a flag. And I believe that's gonna be illegal substitution. <laughs> Wait a minute now. We There is no foul on the play. There's only 10 players. There was no substitution. We're gonna reset the play clock to 25. So that stoppage actually helps the builders because they did not have enough players on the field. They only had 10. So what is, it, what is a good penalty? What is a penalty a good penalty? Right then and there. 37 seconds left in the third. Builders, four wide receivers set. Man-to-man -man coverage on Ricardo Corpus on the right side. Tatum has to be looking in that direction, and he does. Tarkus Corpus, touchdown, Builders! That's a 10-yard catch, 10-yard touchdown catch by Ricardo Corpus. And you can see it coming from a mile away. Ricardo Corpus had man-to-man -man coverage on the near side. Tatum quickly snapped it through it straight to Ricardo. He used his size to shield off the defender as the Jeremiah Morgan point after is up and good. He was able to shield off the defensive back for the touchdown catch. So that makes the new score now 24 to nine, 21 seconds left in the third. We'll take a break to let you hear from Bayport. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Again, so glad you could join us. Howard McCain here with the uh, call of the game. Great job today by our engineer, producer, and our cameraman today to bring you all the sights and the sounds of this afternoon's fantastic matchup between the Hurricanes of Lewisburg and the Apprentice School Builders. We just witnessed a 10-yard touchdown catch from Tatum to Ricardo Corpus, and that has now pushed the builder lead out to 20 four to nine. Here are the Hurricanes on the ensuing kickoff return. Several flags come flying in from the back judge. So we'll sort this out. But man, this has been an exciting football game to say the least as the sun has finally broken through the clouds. Here on this beautiful, beautiful day, been a bit windy. Flags have pretty much been flying all day long, haven't settled down at all, but that has not stopped anything the builders wanted to do. Holding on the receiving team during the run. It'll be a 10-yard penalty and forced at the spot of the hold. First down, Lewisburg. So Kevin, Kevin Salmony is our referee, and he gives you the call there. So that pushes Lewisburg back a little bit further as their quarterback, Reed Paya, back on the field. They come out with a four wide receiver set, single set back to Shapaya's, Shapaya's right as he looks for Flood Brown. Flood Brown able to get around the defense and he steps out of bounds at the 30. So that'll be a first down for Lewisburg. So we've seen this out of Lewisburg where they come out on offense, they start fast, but then they fizzle as they get towards the line, towards the uh, goal line. That's we have a timeout. Third quarter. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter. We're going to stay here. And once again, want to thank each and every one of you that have tuned in for this fantastic football game here on Senior Day here at the Apprentice Athletic Field, and it has been a good one. Builders offensively have just been able to have their way 
with the Hurricane defense. And again, the Hurricanes have had their opportunities. They just have not cashed in on them. They had an opportunity in the third, but they were able to drive the football all the way down to the one yard line of the Builders and weren't able to get in, got turned away on fourth and goal. And the Builders have just done a great, great job of, uh, of, of playing defense here this afternoon. So we've seen Coach Vincent Brown's team look extremely prepared this afternoon in this football game, and it has showed on the scoreboard. So we're transitioning now into the fourth quarter, folks. 24 to nine is our score as the offense for the Hurricanes gets ready to come back out first and 10. Here's Shapaya looking, flush, Walker. Able to put all kinds of pressure on him, but he's able to complete his pass to his running back out of the backfield. So nice pickup there on first down. Marion Rogers, who ended the first half as the leading ball carrier for the Hurricanes at 10 yards. Able to just come across the field on a shallow crossing route. Made himself available to his quarterback who was in trouble and was able to pick up enough for a first down. Football now on the 45 yard line of the Hurricanes as the builders bring pressure. Offensive line, nice job of picking it up. An even better job of their receiver with the catch. So Furman with the catch. That's a 35 yard reception. So that pushes the football down inside the Builder 29 or at the Builder 29 yard line. Four wide receiver set, single set back next to Shapaya. Shapaya flushed, able to get out into the flat and able to get upfield for a nice gain. May have picked up 10 yards on that carry before he spilled out of bounds on the far side. That stops the clock at 13 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the ball game. Builders with a 24 to nine lead. Once again, here's Shapaya. Four wide receiver set, Shapaya to his left side. Finds his receiver for about a five yard gain to Myers. That's gonna bring up second down and five. Clock continues to move. Shade over 13 minutes left in the ball game. Shapaya. Side arms to his receiver on a shallow cross and he's able to get down inside the five yard line. That's Furman. Furman slow to get up, limping somewhat. So Lewisburg threatening again inside the five yard line. We've seen him down here before getting turned away. This time Shapaya will stay in the game. They will not bring Lunsford in at running, at, at quarterback, at Shapaya. Throws it up to the back of the end zone. Good defense by the Builders. Football knocked away by Deshaun Jackson. Who's gonna bring up second down and goal to go from the three is Lunsford will come into the football game, I believe. Nope. Yep, Lunsford makes his way into the football game. Again, Lunsford yet to attempt a pass, so when he comes in, it usually indicates to the builders that this is going to be a quarterback design run. As they have trouble getting lined up 10 seconds on the play clock. Five, four, three, two, and they get the snap away. Jump pass into the end zone for a touchdown. Jump pass by Lunsford into the back of the end zone to his tight end. I believe that is Greer. Nope, that is Riddle for the touchdown. And he kind of stole that from, that was like a jump pass a la Tim Tebow in the Florida Gators several years ago against the LSU Tigers. 
It worked against them, and it worked against us. So that makes our new score now 24 to 15. So Lewisburg not attempting to point after. It looks like they're going to try to go for two here. If they're able to convert, that only makes it a one possession ball game. Even if they kick it, it still makes it only a one possession ball game. It will be the a touchdown plus a two point conversion. Remember, he's got his big wide receiver, Flood Brown, here in the left flat. He rolls away from him. Takes it in himself for two. And that'll make the new score now 24 to 17. So the builders now, now with only a one possession lead here in the fourth quarter. So the builders give up the touchdown at the 12-24 mark. Thanks to a well that was a two point that was a two point conversion right there. But a nice scoring drive by the Hurricanes to get themselves right back in it. Just when it looked like the builders were going to start to pull away. They give up the scoring drive for eight points to the Hurricanes at the 12-44 mark of the fourth quarter. So some of the momentum is now shifted in the ball game from one sideline to the other one from the builder side over to the Hurricane side. So we will see what happens on this assuming drive for the builders. Builders with a return. Big hole up the middle. Builders. Nice return on the kickoff by Logan Mize. That's going to set the builders up at the 35-yard line as we get a time, timeout for injury. So let's step away and allow the staff an opportunity to see about the injured player. I believe he's actually up. So tell you what, we will stay. We will not take a break. He's up and off of the field. So it's good that he's able to get up and walk off on his own power. As Tatum brings the offense back onto the field. So we saw, we saw Ricardo Corpus really be involved on that last drive. As a matter of fact, he was the one that caught the touchdown pass. We haven't seen Gertie or Petty really receive much attention. And as I say that, Gertie on the outside, not able to pick up much of anything. Good job by the defense to string it out. I think there is no gain on that play. So it's going to bring up second down and 10. Builders from their own 35-yard line clock now stopped at 12.08. And we get a stoppage in play from the officials. So not really sure what the stoppage is about. Is something going on on the Lewisburg sideline? And we are whistled back in play. Second, ten. Second down 10, Builders, as Gurney goes in motion. Tatum. Lots of time, plenty of time. Gertie behind the defense. Oh, and he missed him. Leland Gertie was able to get behind the defense. Had that ball been delivered on time, that was six. But instead it falls incomplete, and it brings up third down and 10. Builders, clock now stopped with 11.38 remaining. Builders holding to a 24 to 17 lead, but you can kind of feel where the momentum has somewhat shifted in this football game. Builders with a four wide receiver set. 
single setback next to Tatum. Tatum initially wanted, wanted Ricardo, but the set comes back to the near side for Petty, and that pass falls incomplete. So three plays, no yards gained by the Builders, and that's going to cause the Builders to putt. Lewis Burke sets to receive fair catch quickly called and that's going to put the line of scrimmage for Lewis Burke right around their own 33 nope not their 33 I'm sorry their 28 yard line 28 yard line So all the scoring here in the fourth so far. Has belonged to Lewisburg. The jump pass into the end zone by Lunsford to Riddle and the two point conversion by Shapaya. Shapaya has now narrowed this lead for the builders to one touchdown and a point after. So all of a sudden, new life being shown by Lewisburg offensively as that completion is enough for a first down. So that moves the sticks. Hurricanes at their own 39-yard line, 11.05 remaining. Trapaya tries to get it to his big wide receiver in the middle of the field, but that pass is batted down by the builders. Good thing because their, their big wide receiver their big wide receiver, Brown, was wide open in the middle of the field. Again, he goes six foot six, 214 pounds. And defensively, we don't have anyone that can match up with him size-wise in our secondary. So Shapaya able to find Furman. So Foreman is able to get up field, and there's going to be a face mask penalty at the end of that pitch and catch. Again, DeMonte Furman with the uh, catch, but there's going to be an additional 15 yards that are going to be tacked onto the end of this, of this run via a face mask penalty. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 10. The 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's going to be Brown for the builders from his, uh, from his defensive back position. So, wow, that's a big penalty. Because that pushes the ball down to the 25-yard line of the Builders. And again, Lewisburg finding new life offensively here in the second half. Quarterback fumbles a snap, then tries to get it out to his wide receiver where he does, but that was a drop. A fortuitous bounce of the football by the quarterback, Trapaya. So he maintains possession. Second down and 10. It looks like they moved. It looks like they moved the down marker back one yard. So did they? Okay, so they moved it back. So they did call an incomplete pass. So no loss, yard, no loss yardage on the play. Trapaya finds his receiver out in the right flat. But he's quickly, well, he's able to break free. Builders had him stop, but he was able to get out of the tackle, the initial tackle, by, uh, by Ja'Shawn Jackson. He was able to get a field, and a late flag came out. So this is going to be another face mask penalty on the Builders on Brown. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 10, half the distance to the goal line, automatic, first down. So for Brown, that's back-to-back -back face mask penalties to the tune of 
close to 30 yards, but the the mark off on this face mask is half the distance to the goal, so it wasn't quite 15. But it's still yardage and downs that go over to the Hurricanes, and we're going to take a timeout. Timeout, timeout. by the Builders. Newport News Apprentice. And I think they this need is their this. first charge timeout of the half. Good, good timeout by Coach Brown to kind of get his defense over on the sideline and just kind of talk about things. So let's step away quickly and let you from Bayport. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BayportCU.org to learn more. And welcome back, folks. 10.05 remaining in the fourth quarter. Builders with a 24 to 17 lead over the Hurricanes of Lewisburg. But Lewisburg is threatening. First and goal for Lewisburg at the eight yard line. Shapaya looks, going to his big wide receiver who pushed off, no flag in the end zone. And the fans saw the exact same thing that I did. You can see Brown extend his hands to create some space between him and the defensive back. Everyone thought that was pass interference, including me. But as it goes, it's an incomplete pass. Second down and eight. I'm sorry, second down and goal from the eight-yard line. As the crowd still looking for that pass interference call. Single wide receiver, two tight end set. As again, they go to Brown. And that is a touchdown. A little too much. A little too much cushion being given by the defensive back. He was literally out there all by himself, so that was just a simple eight-yard touchdown pass from Shapaya to Jalen Brown. As the point after attempt upcoming from the Hurricanes. If they make this, the score is tied, and it is. So 9.53 remaining in the ball game. The Hurricanes have mounted a comeback here in the second half and have done all the scoring in the fourth, and they've now tied this football game at 24 points apiece here on Senior Day at the Apprentice Athletics Field. Again, so glad you could join us. This game has been everything we thought it would be. We knew that it would be exciting all the way down to the clock reaching triple zero, and that's what it's looking like. Again, 9.53 remaining in the football game. 24, 24 is our score. At one time, it looked like the builders could do no wrong offensively and defensively, but it has been a totally different football game here in the second half. Builders were able to score in the second half, but they've been outscored so far 16 to 7 here in the second in the second half. Builders set to receive. This kick is going to go over the head, but it does. It, but it dies at the five-yard line. That is a live football, and that is a mistake. That is a costly mistake by Willis Walton. Costly mistake by Willis Walton. He underestimated the kickoff. He thought it was going to hit and 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 roll it to the end zone, but it didn't. It died right at the five-yard line. Walton went down to try to pick it up, but fell to his knees. And that's where the officials blew the, the play dead. But after the play, looks like a couple of players got into it and a flag is going to be thrown. So there's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct, but who will it be on? Will it be on the builders or will it be on Lewisburg? 
After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team, number 22. It'll be a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Folks, that's called a bailout, is what that is. They, um, the, the, the government sent those out a few years ago to a lot of companies. This, today, that is number 22's the builders received theirs. On sportsmanlike conduct of the game. So that 15 yard penalty pushes the football out comfortably to the 20 yard line. And that's where Tatum and the offense will take over. 9.51 remaining in the football game. We are now tied 24-24. Tatum looking targets Gertie but the ball goes into the dirt and Gertie is unable to come up with it so Gertie has had opportunities Tatum just has not delivered the football to him cleanly I believe had he done so there are some good things could have happened for the offense so second down at 10 945 remaining <coughs> Excuse me. In the bat, in the in the football game, I'm thinking about tomorrow basketball. Tatum steps up, pick. That's an interception. Tatum's pass is picked off for the third time today, and for the second time today, Holding Devin Martin. Offense number 51. That penalty will be declined. Lewisburg College ball. First down. So for Devin Martin, that is his second pick of the day. And for Mason Tatum, that is his third interception of today. So you put your defense back on the field after having given up a touchdown and a two-point convert. Nope, not a touchdown. That was the last drive. So a touchdown, and they're back out there again, again. Builders have been outscored here in the second half, 16 to seven, and are in danger of giving up more. Of course, Lewisburg is already in field goal position if they don't pick up a single yard on this, on this uh, set of downs. So Shapaya looking. Into the end zone to his big tight end for another touchdown. So one play, seven points. 14-yard pass into the end zone by Shapaya, and the comeback is now complete. So pending the point after, 30 to 24 is our score. As all of a sudden the builders cannot stop the pass of Lewisburg. And that point after is up, but it is no good. So there's a chance that that could come back to play huge down the stretch in this football game. As again, Sherpaya is able to deliver to Riddle into the end zone for the score. So let's step away quickly for you to hear these words from Maple. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn that's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. So the Builders have been outscored now in the second half of play 22 to seven. They've given up defensively two touchdowns in the span of about 25 seconds. Those are not good stats, ladies and gentlemen. And that, that is why the Builders find themselves now down 30 to 24 short kickoff by the, by the Hurricanes. This should be a good return for the builders, and it is. So Willis Walton, who made the catastrophic mistake on the last kickoff, is able to somewhat redeem himself, but there's a flag. 
And judging by where it is, that's either going to be a hold or a block in the back on the return team. There is no hold on the kicking team on the play. First and 10, Newport News Apprentice. So that will give the Builders the football at the end of the return, which will be the 38-yard line. And Builders need something big to happen here. They need something. Momentum-wise, there's none. So the Builders need to build it. One-on-one coverage on the outside on Corpus, on Ricardo Corpus. They put a bigger defensive back on Corpus. That's Teddy, that's Teddy Wilson, who's actually a linebacker. That's going to be a quarterback keeper by Mason Tatum that doesn't pick up anything. So he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Clock continues to tick. We're down to 9.05 left in the football game. So you need to see the builders put together some plays to keep their defense off of the field. So we need good offense to help out our defense. Now a five wide receiver set as Gertie goes in motion. Tatum looks for Gertie. Gertie almost reels in the tough, tough catch. So what that does now is that brings up third down and long for the builders as we have a player down deep in Lewis officials secondary. timeout for injury so we get a timeout so let's step away and we'll get the hear these words from the thing that sets worlds apart is that our people here truly care they're here because they love their jobs and they want to learn more what i like about worlds is the people uh, the team I work with every day. My favorite thing about working at Worley's is that it's more like a family. I mean, it is work, but it's not. They actually treat me like a person and not a number. And this is the first company where I really feel like I belong. Here at Worley's, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers, they really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. Like the team, everybody's a team player. Um, all about doing the right thing for the customer, taking pride in your work. It's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. we got a great team. We have fun together from my plumbers to my air conditioning guys to my crawl space guys. Everybody, like, works together as a team. Um, they're just phenomenal. We have training programs. We like it when people come in. They don't really know what they want to do, and we're able to help them find a trade and do things such as, like, a paid-for apprenticeship programs for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Uh, we sent people as far as Texas to also doing them here locally. We just truly like to see our people grow and succeed and get to the next step of their career. We want people here who truly aspire to be the best in their, in their fields. So the injured player is now off the field. I believe that was Quintez Christian. I believe he was cramping, so he's off the field as the builders get set third down 10, 8.34 remaining. Four right receiver set for Tatum. It's Tatum looks. Tries to get it to, I believe, that was Gertie. The fans are looking for offense, defensive pass interference. There is no call. So the builders look to figure out what they're going to do. They are going to punt. And you can hear an uneasiness come over this home crowd here on senior day as they start to see the, the uh, flags not coming out of the officials' pants like they hoped they would on that play. So again, momentum continues to stay with Lewisburg as the builders punt it away. Nice punt. Good job. They have an opportunity to pin them deep if they can get to the football, and they do not. That was a golden opportunity by the builders to pin the Hurricanes deep in their own territory, unable to come up with it, was Ricardo Corpus. So this is going to bring the football out to the 20-yard line, and that is where the Hurricanes, who now have regained the lead at 30-24, to will come back out on offense and 
here in the second half on offense, they've looked unstoppable in their passing game. So early in the, in the football game, Builders able to get pressure on the quarterback here lately, none as that pitch and catch is an easy one. Folks, he might be gone. That is an 80-yard touchdown pass from Kerpaya. From Sherpaya to, is there a flag? There is a flag back around the 15-yard line. So that may not affect, that will not affect the 80-yard catch for a touchdown. The result of the play is going to be a touchdown. After the touchdown was scored, we have a sideline warning on Lewisburg College. So that's Javon Myers with the 80-yard catch. And that now gives Lewisburg a two possession lead, 36-24 with the point after pending. And this stadium has gone silent. <laughs> a bit of a scoring clinic being put on and the point after is good. So on the heels of an 80-yard touchdown catch by Sherpaya. And that was, again, that was Myers for 80 yards. And that happened at the 8.03 mark of the fourth. So again, we've seen a, a, an absolute explosion of offense here in the last minute and a half. In the last minute and a half of actual gameplay for Lewisburg. Lewisburg has scored 21 points in a minute and a half here of actual gameplay to put, the, put some distance between themselves and the builders, score now 37 to 24, 803 left in the football game. So again, this is a football team coming in, scoring or averaging about 29 points per game. So they are, they, they are no slouch offensively, nor should we have ever thought about them that way. And they're showing their offensive prowess here late in the football game. But the builders have helped them out with some miscues of our own as we get a return here by Mize. Mize is shot down around the builder 30, 31 yard line. And that is where Tatum, Mason Tatum will bring the offense back onto the field. Mason Tatum played a pretty clean game in the first half. He did have that one interception, but other than that, put the builders in position over and over and over to score. But here in the second half, the wheels have kind of fallen off somewhat. Two interceptions that were costly that were turned into points, but we have a flag on the return, and we'll hear from the referee. There is no blindside block on the play. First down, Newport News Apprentice. Okay, so that's another penalty flag that's been picked up. So here come the builder, Builders offense with 7.57 left in the ball game. Ball game is not over by any means. But we have to make something happen here. So again, every play does not have to be a big play if you are the offense. Take what the defense gives you as a blitz. Off the corner comes. Behind the defense is Gertie. Gertie. Out into the flat, folks. That is a touchdown. Builders, 69 yards. So this football game is not over yet. And that one was needed, big time. So that puts some energy back into the stadium, back into the stands, and back into this broadcast. 
Tatum, all kinds of pressure coming at him, but he was still able to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike to Gertie, who was able to get behind an aggressive defense. We've seen these corners sitting on routes all day long. It was just a matter of time before one was able to get behind them for a big play, and that big play came courtesy of a 69-yard touchdown pass from Tatum to Gurley with a point after. Hitting the upright, no good. Wow. So even with that missed point after, the builders are only down one score. So let's step away and we will get these messages from Bayport. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. And welcome back. Listen to this, everybody. In less than two minutes of actual gameplay, we've had 28 total points scored in this football game. 21 by Lewisburg, and that seven just a minute ago by the Builders. Long kickoff by Morgan taken. Muffed, but picked up by Lewisburg. We have a flag. More than likely, that is going to be a block in the back on Lewisburg, so that'll be half the distance to the goal marked off from the spot. So let's see how much energy that puts or how much of a charge that puts into the builder defense as they get ready to make their way into the, onto the field. One possession is the difference in this ball game for the builders. They score, they're right back in it. Plenty of time remaining, seven Lock minutes, in the back. 48 seconds. On the receiving team, number one, half the distance to the goal, first down. As you can hear the crowd starting to, started to cheer on the defense. What a fantastic ball game this has been. Ball is whistled into play. Lunsford is your quarterback. Lunsford looks. Able to get upfield to around the 10 yard line. So that'll be about a two or three yard gain on first down. So that has Lewis Burke currently on schedule. Three yard gain on the play, makes it second and seven. So the builders need to do something here to make them uncomfortable on third down. And the uncomfortable thing for them to do on third down with Lusford in the ball game is to make them pass. Lusford only attempted one pass in this ball game, and that was a jump pass to his tight end. He's able to get around the left side, but he's shot down there. So there may have been about a two-yard gain, so that's going to make it third down at about six. That's going to make it about third down and six upcoming, I believe. 6.39 and counting on the clock. So the Hurricanes make changes offensively as Lunsford leaves the game. Shapaya makes his way back in at quarterback. So that gives them a better option, a better passing option on third down. Flood Brown has been the, 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 the likely target that they're looking for as he turns and makes his way upfield. But the pass goes out of bounds and the defense holds. Credit that throwaway, credit that throwaway to uh, K-1 Schuler. He was the one that was putting the pressure on the quarterback and forced a pass out of bounds. So the builders have the opportunity that they've been looking for. 
Vilda should get good field position, barring anything disastrous happening on this exchange of possession. Gurney back at his own at the midfield stripe. Set to receive the punt. Builders come after it. Punt goes straight up in the air. So that punt goes out of bounds. Trying to see exactly where it's. So that's a 16, that's a 16 yard punt by the Hurricanes. And the Builders can slowly start to feel Mr. Momentum change address from the far sideline to the near. 6.04 remaining. Builders down by one score. Two timeouts left. Mason Tatum, the last time we saw him, he delivered a 69-yard strike to Leland Gurdy. So again, builders do not have to go for the big play on every down as Gurdy goes in motion. Tatum looks. Flushed and sacked. Chavez Samuels with the sack. And if you can see, Chavez Samuel has a huge cast on his right hand. And you would think that would really, really affect how he's able to, to actually grab and take a quarterback down. But no ill effects on that play. That's a big loss. So it makes it second and 15, five-yard loss. Builders have abandoned the running game here in the second half. It was really effective for him in the first half as the Hurricanes show blitz off the edge. Tatum looks for Gurdy. Gurdy behind the defense. Touchdown, Builders! 35 yards. Tatum to Gurdy for another touchdown. My goodness. I am running out of room on my sheet to record all the scoring. As Tatum hits Gertie for a second time in the half, in the quarter, for a huge touchdown. Officials timeout for injury. Wow. What a game. What a game, ladies and gentlemen, as we have a player down for the builders on the near side around the 10-yard line. That's TK Petty, and we're going to step away for a break. Uh, we'll be right back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. Could you have asked for a better game on senior day I dare to say no way this has been incredible so the builders have an opportunity here with this point after by Jeremiah Morgan to tie this ball game up and that kick is up and good 37 to 37 Woo! kind of had to hold your breath just a little bit on that point after because we've seen both teams miss point afters so that kind of evens those out, and the score is now evened out. 5.07 left in the football game. Who wants it more? That is what it's about to come down to. Senior day here at the Apprentice School Athletic Field, and it has been all we thought it would be. Wow. 74 total points in the game, and we aren't even done yet. Jeremiah Morgan gets set to kick. This would be one of those times you would love to see Jeremiah boom it into the end zone to not even give, him, give them an opportunity to return it. Morgan dribbles it along the sideline. That goes out of bounds. That's not going to be good, and it does. 
That is not good. That is going to give the Hurricanes an opportunity to start this drive at the 35 yard line. Kick out of bounds, kicking team, number 49. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. So that's an extra 15 yards of field position you give the offense off of a miscue on the kick. So it's up to the builder defense here to continue to hold after, after just hemorrhaging yards and points coming out of the halftime locker room in the third. Trapaya looks, ball tip. Is that an interception? We haven't got the call yet. Wait a minute, the line, the linesmen, the, the officials are still talking. And we have a flag that's gonna be thrown. So that's gonna be post possession. But there is no indication yet that it's builder ball. I don't see it yet. Here's the referee. After the interception, I have unsportsmanlike conduct on number 55 on the intercepting team. It'll be 15 yards from the end of the run. First down, Newport News Apprentice. So the, build, the builders will hold on to possession after the tip drill got started on that pass play and the builders were disciplined enough to get underneath that and bring it in for an interception and the defense does exactly what you needed it to do. It's unfortunate that they got the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So that pushes the football all the way back to midfield where Tatum, who just delivered two passes to Gertie for close to, well, for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. To put the builders right back in it to tie the score 37 to 37, five minutes left. In the football game, here's Tatum, Gibb, Green. Green, busts up the middle. Able to get the football down the field for 10 yards to the 40-yard line, and there's that running game that we haven't seen since the end of the first half. Builders want to go quickly. Builders tried to get the ball snapped quickly to try to catch big number 99 still on the field as he was trying to make his way off to get too many men on the field. That did not happen. 18 seconds left on the play clock. Game clock at 428. That's an offside. I didn't see a flag. I don't see a flag drop. The whole crowd moaned because number 57 jumped off sides. That's Mikey Anderson, but there was no call from either of the officials. So about four yards picked up on that play by the builder's offense. Clock continues to tick. We're now under four minutes left, second down and six. Crowd deathly silent right now. <laughs> Tatum looks for his receiver. Receiver was open. TK Petty was open, but ball was delivered poorly. So it's going to make it now third down. So this is going to be a big. This is going to be a big down for the builders. Now, the builders don't have to pick all this up on third down. The goal, at least, is to try to cut this yard to go in half. If you're going to think about going for it on fourth. As they go to Corpus, Ricardo Corpus, his pass is tipped out of bounds, tips and flies out of bounds. That's Malachi Greer on the coverage. So Coach Brown has a decision. He could just, well, he could take a timeout and talk about it. Me, personally, I think you kick and play defense. The punting unit makes its way onto the field. The goal here, the goal here for John Howell is to try to directional kick it out of bounds somewhere deep 
in their own territory. You do not want to deliver this to the return man. He almost fumbles it. He directional kicks it near the sideline. So it all depends on where they spot it. Right at the 10 yard line. So that's good kicking right there, folks. That's exactly what you want. That's where the Hurricanes will take over first and 10 with 335 to play. So Lewisburg will start this next drive with three minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the football game. We are tied. They have all three timeouts. They have to go 90 yards. Well, not necessarily because depending on what, what they are able to run and actually convert, they could just simply work to get themselves in field goal range to try to take the lead. Here's Shapaya. Shapaya looks flush. And he is taken down for a sack. That is Schuler. Schuler, the six foot two, 240 pound sophomore with a big sack. That's a loss of seven yards on the play. So that pushes the Hurricanes deep into their own territory. So if you're Lewisburg, you do not, you cannot afford to make a mistake here. If you are the builders, you can't let them out of jail. Here's Shapaya, pass, caught. Builders with the stop. That's gonna be well short of a first, but that gets them off the shadow of their own end zone. Short gain on the play of about maybe three, four yards. So the builders need to keep everything in front of them. So if you're the defensive coordinator, do you dial up pressure here? A lot of clock being used here by the visiting team as they break the huddle four wide. Builders. Pressure. Chapaya. Chapaya gets out of it. Tries to deliver right downfield. And it's not down. No flags on the field. I don't see a single flag. So that play stands. So that's going to make it fourth down. 12. Ball sits on the eight yard line. On coverage for Builders, Dyson Jackson. So once again, Builders should get good field position out of this change of possession, barring anything disastrous happening. Gertie with his heels on the 39-yard line. Last time the Hurricanes punted, it was only 16 yards. This one is further as we get flags that came out immediately. Now they're way back here by where Gertie was. So did we have too many men on the field? So if it's too many men on the field, that's only gonna be a five yard penalty that will not be enough for a first down. So will the kicking team just simply Will the team, will the, will the, uh, will the kicking team just decline it and give them the football where they are, or will they run the risk of shanking it if they kick it again? Illegal substitution on the receiving team. Twelve men were on the field. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll re-kick the football. Okay. After the penalty, the ball moves out to the 13-yard line. So the punter was able to get a much better better kick on the ball. That's Gundiker. So let's hope that them not taking the play works out better for us as far as field position. Uh, well, that's a much, much better kick. So the penalty helps the Hurricanes. So that was more than a five yard difference in field position between punts. So the builders have their task right in front of them. One minute, 53 seconds remaining. 
All you need to do is eat up clock and get in field goal range for Jeremiah Morgan. But the builders need to pick up at least two first downs, at least, to even give their kicker a shot. Again, you don't have to have a big play on every play. Take what the defense gives you on offense. Run. So that's going to get the builders right back to the original line of scrimmage. Clock continues to tick. A minute 40 remaining. We're tied. Tatum changes the play. Lewisburg comes and shows blitz, but comes out of it as they look for Petty. Not enough separation there for Petty to make a clean catch. Now that stops the clock. At a minute 21, Hurricanes with three timeouts, Builders with two. So if the builders aren't able to pick up the first down here, you're going to have to punt. There's just no if, if, ands, or buts about it. You have to punt the football. Single high safety for the Hurricanes. As Petty goes in motion. Tatum steps up. He's, he's sacked and fumbled. And the Hurricanes have the football. That is one of the worst possible outcomes if you're the builders. And we're going to take a Official timeout. Official timeout for and injury. Player to hear from the ball was fumbled, turned over. Lewisburg College football. The thing that sets Worley's apart is that our people here truly care. They're here because they love their jobs and they want to learn more. What I like about Worley's is the people, uh, the team I work with every day. My favorite thing about working at Worley's is that it's more like a family. I mean, it is work, but it's not. They actually treat me like a person and not a number. And this is the first company where I really feel like I belong. Here at Worley's, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers, really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. Like the team, everybody's a team player. Um, all about doing the right thing for the customer, taking pride in your work. It's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. We got to. And we're back. 115 left. Hurricanes with the football after the turnover. Dump down to the running back. And we're going to get a personal foul penalty, possibly targeting. Helmet to helmet contact on the receiver. So the discussion is going to be, was he defenseless? The player for the builders did not lead with their head after further discussion, there is no foul for targeting. The player hit underneath the neck area. I know that I'm with the home team, and um, Lewisburg does we not like up that. Tart. But I do believe that was the right call. That was there, there was contact between their helmets, but the player did not lead with the crown of his helmet. So as it goes, incomplete pass, second down and 10, Hurricanes. Chapaya finds his receiver. And he drives ahead, and I believe he's going to pick up enough for the first down. So the clock continues to tick. 57 seconds and counting. Again, the Hurricanes don't need to score a touchdown. They just need to get into field goal range to give themselves an opportunity. Chapaya steps out, finds an opening. Tries to deliver it to his wide out. Pass is incomplete. Good coverage here on the near side. By Reed. That stops the clock. With 33 seconds remaining. 
Now, I, is that four? I believe that's fourth. That's going to bring up fourth down. So earlier in the drive, it looked like the wideout had picked up enough for a first down, but he was short on second down. And that third down play did not yield a first. So here's Shapaya on fourth down. Shapaya flush, chased by their linebacker. He, it all depends on the spot. It all depends on the spot. They're right there near the marker. I think they're gonna mark him short. I think he should be marked short. And it looks like they're gonna mark him just short. Nice job of getting over and making that tackle short. We are going to measure, down, but we are going to measure. So they're gonna measure. So this is big, because this could be a game deciding call right here. Denzel Porter able to track down the, the, the quarterback on the far side near the sticks. From our vantage point, he is going to be short by about half of a yard. But again, it all comes down to the spot they stretch the sticks. Folks, he's going to be short. He is short of the yard to gain by about a half of a yard, and that will be Builder football. 24 seconds remaining. The football will be on the Builder. 33-yard line. Builders, two timeouts. They just need to get in the field goal range. So to get something comfortably up in the air, as far as a field goal goes, the builders need about 30 yards. Can the builders go 30 yards in 24 seconds with two timeouts? Absolutely. But it is up to the Hurricanes to keep all of the wideouts in front of them. So they will drop safeties deep as we get a flag. Not really sure what this flag is. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct on player number 58 who is on the sideline. It's going to be a 15-yard wow. penalty. We're going to be playing first down. This is number 58's first on Sports and Line Conduct of the half or the I, game. I don't care who you are or how much football you have or have not watched. That is a huge penalty because the builders pick up 15 yards with the clock not even starting. So that is huge. So they pretty much cut in half what the builders need to pick up in order for a comfortable field goal try. And here's a huge catch in the middle of the field to Nick. Pierce, his first catch of the day from Mason Tatum, and we get a timeout. 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 Newport News Apprentice. The this is their second timeout of the half. 16 seconds left on the clock. And the new line of scrimmage for the Builders is the 30 yard line. If the Builders do not pick up a single yard here in the next 16 seconds, then that would be about a 47 yard field goal attempt from there you would want to pick up somewhere between close to another 10 to make it comfortable for Jeremiah Morgan wow what an ending to a fantastic football game it is going to come down to the wire we are either going to win this thing or we're going into overtime I would much rather win this thing Oh, we want to thank you all so much for joining us. This game has been everything we hoped it would be. Coming off of an 80 to nothing shellacking of Central International last week, the Builders come back this week to play extremely well against a much tougher opponent. Even when their backs were against the wall and they gave up the lead and went down by two scores, there was no quit in this football team. Now they haven't won it yet. There are still some plays left to be run. But you love where the builders are right now. So 16 seconds remaining. Builders need at least 10 yards to comfortably put up a kick for three. Ball goes off of the running back's helmet out of bounds. 
That was a six second play. Builders may have time for one more. Now they can throw in the middle of the field, catch it, get down quickly, and call a timeout. So it doesn't, so this play doesn't necessarily have to go to the sidelines. They can still get something in the middle of the field. They have one timeout. So what does Coach Vincent Brown and his offense do? They come out four wide receiver set. Single high safety, one linebacker. They show blitz. Tatum cannot take a sack here, and he throws the ball away. So five seconds remaining. There is enough time. Quarterback was out of the pocket. Time. The ball crossed the line of scrimmage. There is no enough time for grounding. another play. So Jeremiah Morgan is going to come on. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. So, of course, this play isn't going to go off until Lewisburg calls a timeout to try to freeze the kicker, and they'll do that at the last possible moment. Everybody up on the line of scrimmage. And there's the timeout from Lewisburg. Timeout, Lewisburg College. This is their first charge timeout of the half. So they, so they want to give Jeremiah Morgan an opportunity to talk about it. So we'll take a quick, quick break here from Bayport. We'll be right back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. Jeremiah Morgan has an opportunity to be the hero here on senior day, 47 yard kick. Builders need to stay disciplined up front. Everybody has to make their blocks. The kick is up, it's long enough and it is good! And that'll do it, that is it! No time left on the clock, Jeremiah Morgan nails a 47 yard field goal for the win. And on senior day here at the Apprentice Athletic Field, the Builders come away with a hard fought 40 to 37 victory over the Lewisburg Hurricanes. And wow, what a game. What an incredible game here on senior day. Wow. That was awesome. I hope everyone watching enjoyed this football game as much as we did. Huge congratulations to Coach Vincent Brown and his coaching staff for never giving up and never letting his guys quit when it looked like this game was headed back to North Carolina for Lewisburg. Great job by the coaching staff of, of Coach Spellman for Lewisburg for bringing his team in here ready to play today. But they will go home having lost this game to the Builders by a score of 40 to 37. What a great football game. I want to thank again everyone that was involved in bringing this game to you. I want to thank our engineer, producer. I want to thank his dad as well. Oh man, Howard McCain here. We're about to sign off. And again, congratulations to the builder on senior day as they take home a hard fought 40 to 37 victory here at the athletic, the apprentice athletic field. Once again, thank you everyone. We're going to say good night. And again, remember, this is Builder Football. The thing that sets Worley's apart is that our people here truly care. They're here because they love their jobs and they want to learn more. What I like about Worley's is the people, uh, the team I work with every day. My favorite thing about working at Worley's is that it's more like a family. I mean, it is work, but it's not.
they actually treat me like a person and not a number. And this is the first company where I really feel like I belong. Here at Worley's, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers, really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. Like the team, everybody's a team player. Um, all about doing the right thing for the customer, taking pride in your work. And it's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. We've got a great team. We have fun together from my plumbers to my air conditioning guys to my crawl space guys. Everybody, like, works together as a team. Um, they're just phenomenal. We have training programs. We like it when people come in and they don't really know what they want to do, and we're able to help them find a trade and do things such as, like, a paid-for apprenticeship programs for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Uh, we send people as far as Texas to also doing them here locally. We just truly like to see our people grow and succeed and get to the next step of their career. We want people here who truly aspire to be the best in their, in their fields. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaypoortCU.org to learn more.